A hundred years, not that long when you consider a woman born in South Carolina just turned 116 and became the oldest living person in the country. A hundred years ago, troops were returning from Europe after fighting in World War I, and the 19th Amendment was passed, giving women the right to vote. Here to help us celebrate Women's Equality Day and the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment is Representative Crystal Matthews of House District 117, which covers Berkeley and Charleston counties. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Crystal, what would a day such as today mean for you as far as the women's right to vote, uh, equality amongst women? What are your thoughts on that? Well, for me, today means having the ability to speak in rooms where women need to be heard. Um, a lot of people um, I've seen on Facebook and other platforms, you know, say it's a privilege. And for me, I'm thinking it's not a privilege. It is our right. It is our absolute right to be heard in rooms where decisions are being made that affect us. Um, as many people kn do know, the uh, Five, nearly five decades after it was passed is when a lot of black women were allowed to vote. Uh, we were not included in, in the original because of you know racial laws and things like that at, at that time. But um, for me, I am absolutely standing on my platform and glad to be in these rooms having these conversations. And I appreciate you mentioning that with the Civil Rights Act. Um, and, and for you personally, your road to becoming a lawmaker yourself, representing people here in South Carolina. What drove you to pursue a life in politics? Honestly, I had never thought about it. Um, I was reading an article one day entitled Midterm Elections and Why They're Important. And I began to realize how important the local decisions that our elected officials make actually affect our daily, um, everyday grind. And when we're sitting around, and I know you and I and others have probably sat around many times and said, well, who thought of that? That's not a good idea. Um, when you look at the span of men to women in the state house, it is just astronomical. The gap is just so huge. And so when our issues aren't in the forefront and when they're not put on the table, uh, it's not really a question of, of why. I think, I think the why is pretty obvious, but we need more voices. And I am, in fact, the first woman and the first black woman in my district. So, I mean, it's 2020 and that, that tells a lot. And going back to suffrage and the right to vote for all women, uh, why is it important that people get out there and they cast their ballot? I know a lot of people, they think, well, you know, there's the electoral college and there's this and there's that, and my vote's not going to count. Uh, but that's not true. This is an exercise of your democratic freedoms. So so why, what words would you tell women out there who are questioning whether or not they should head to the polls? Um, I'm going to tell them to be fearless and get out there. Even if you don't feel like it's going to make a difference, I would not have been elected if people had not gone to the polls. Um, we wouldn't have women's rights if people did not go to the polls. We would not have Social Security if people did not go to the polls. All of the things that we now enjoy and that we fight about, right, when we when we hear these elections come up, we say um, either we're for it or against it. Those things are decided at the polls. And I think people get upset and they tend to withdraw. But we really can't withdraw because when you withdraw, you leave it in somebody else's hands to decide. And yet you're still going to be affected by it. And tell us about some of the legislation that you're working on currently. Um, currently, I am working on one of my biggest ones is the tampon tax, uh, which is removing the tax on women's menstrual products. Um, it is a medical supply. It is not something that we choose to do. And I know a lot of people say, well, they're not that expensive. It's not about um, making it um, more expensive or less expensive, but making it more attainable. We want to do everything we can to remove barriers to healthcare items. Um, Alcohol swaps for diabetics are currently like two dollars and something cents for a box, right? But those are tax exempt in the state of South Carolina because they're a diabetic supply. So I am working very hard to do that and shed light on um, things that pose inequalities that people may not know. Um, simply buying a pink razor versus a blue razor uh, used to be a deal. I don't know if people really know that, but they used to charge more and really you're just pouring a different color plastic in the mold <laughs> and right. it's the same razor. But um, 
we tend to make less, right? Yeah. Um, for the pay, we're still very much in the fight for equality here um, in America. I so think we celebrate are, women's equality, but we haven't quite reached it yet. Exactly. There's still very much a pay gap, a promotion gap, right? Access to information. Um, those things still very much exist um, here in America. And I think that it's great that we're highlighting this because people get lulled to sleep by what the norm is. But I think it's very, very good for us to continue to be aware and work to change these systems. Yeah. And I, I know both genders, they they suffer uh, those problems as well, that they're not getting the, the, there is a pay gap for men as well. I mean, uh, there are plenty of women who have attained a certain status and men have struggled, uh, but there's disproportionately maybe more women who are finding that to still be the case. With just a couple of seconds left, can you tell us a bit more about the bag that's sitting behind you, Crystal and Company? Oh, so the bag behind me is Crystal and Company. It is my new um, brand. It's my new website that I have. It's going to be me in my own words. I am very much known as a very outspoken, very honest legislator, um, not based on any um, rhyme or reason, but just really telling it so that people understand it and break it down in bite-sized pieces. And this website will be going live soon and you can chime in, you can talk to me, I will talk back to you and we can discuss the real things that shape this state. Representative, I want to thank you so much for joining us and we're going to stay tuned and, and watch as that uh, goes live. Thank you so much. Thank you.